Hello and welcome to our special night of broadcast. This is what we're calling our Keras Campus Reveal. And I'm here with my executive tr uh, team. I sometimes call them my brain trust. <laughs> These are the ones that make everything work. And we, I'm really excited. I've been anticipating this for a very, very long time. And so just a real quick overview of what's going to happen tonight. We've got this schedule to go two hours, which I know is a lot of time, but we've got a lot to share. We are going to have uh, some people come on and uh, in, uh, share endorsements and uh, promote cares. We're going to have Mike Huckabee, Kenneth Copeland, Bill Johnson, General Jerry Boykin, Richard Roberts, James Robinson, Dwayne Sheriff, James Brown, Rick Renner, Tim Barton, John Tesh, Connie Selica, and Joni Lamb. And so they're going to be with us. And at the very end of this program, you don't want to miss that, we got Jesse Duplantis that will actually be zooming in live. And we're going to spend around 15 minutes with him. Jesse has just become a great friend, and he really wanted to be a part of this, told me he'd do anything, and so uh, Jesse is watching what we're doing. But anyway, the purpose of this is to show you what the Lord has led me to do concerning uh, taking Karis to the next level. And so real quickly, I'm just going to give some brief things here about our history, but we started Karis in 1994. And we have now grown to this year, I believe we have 1,050-something students on our main campus. We have about 8,000 worldwide. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that there's 20 or 21 countries that we have students in. And it is growing exponentially. And so I've been expanding. In 2009, we bought the property uh, where Karis is located in 2017. We expanded onto, uh, added another 336 acres. We now have a total of over 500 acres. And I knew that there was going to be more. We needed student housing. We'll be talking about that more in just a second. But I just want to share with you briefly that Karis is not my idea. I actually didn't want a Bible school at first. God put this in my heart. And the Lord just supernaturally caused this to come to pass. We've got a little video that we call the Little Star Video. It's over 12 minutes normally, but we've cut it down to only two minutes and something. And I just want to show you part of this because at the very exact time that the man who owned this property got born again and committed the, this property to the Lord, he had a vision of buildings. And I didn't know any of this. At the exact day that the Lord spoke to him, the Lord spoke to me over in England and told me to start the Bible school. 16 years later, we bought this property. And this is a God deal. So watch this real shortened video that we call the Little Star Video, and it will explain a little bit more about the history of Karis. Since answering the call to start Karis Bible College, Andrew Womack has spent the last three decades fulfilling a vision bigger than himself. A vision so grand and so beautiful that God shared a vision of it with a land developer as a promise that his beloved property would one day teach others about Jesus. In 1992, real estate investor Gilbert Jackson received a terminal cancer diagnosis. Though his daughter Debbie and her husband Mark had often shared their faith with him, his conversion came through his humble caregiver, Merlene. Merlene said she just kept you know, repeating scripture and whatever what God would put on her heart to say. And he literally visualized Jesus standing in the door, extending his hand to him um, to step through the door and become a believer. And he did. He took Jesus' hand and he stepped through that door and the rest is history. Upon dedicating his life to the Lord, Gilbert had just 11 days to live. But in that brief time, he told his daughter that he wished to see his prized property in Woodland Park, Colorado become a campus. And with that, he had the following vision. A structure that would have glass walls so the students could see the beauty of Pikes Peak. He had always talked about his properties in a very business-like way. Now his focus had changed and he said, these properties need to be put together and used for Christian uses, Christian endeavors, Christian education. In the year that Gilbert Jackson received his vision, coincidentally, Andrew Womack heard God telling him to start a Bible school in Colorado Springs. 
for the next 20 years, Karis Bible College outgrew building after building until Andrew eventually purchased Gilbert Jackson's prized acreage in Woodland Park. But when he revealed the building design he had received from the Lord, Mark and Debbie were blown away. Without any prior knowledge of Gilbert's story, Andrew had designed the Christian school the dying man had seen in his final days of life, including the giant windows facing Pikes Peak. We couldn't have dreamed this. We couldn't have uh, sat down on a whiteboard or a yellow legal pad as we used to with Gilbert and, and figured this out. It was, it, there was too many variables. There were too many unknowns. There was no way we could have ever imagined this happening, and yet God did this. As Andrew and his partners come together to launch student housing on the Karis campus, this story reminds us that this is God's idea. This property is His land, and that makes it very good ground in which to sow the seed of His Word into an untold number of lives. We all have a part in something that is bigger than any one of us. It is a story that is ultimately to the glory of God alone. Praise the Lord. I wanted to play that just to give you an idea that this really is God's idea. It is not my idea. I feel like I'm just getting things downloaded to me. And so that is a brief history of where we've been. But did you know in uh, 2018, we had a parking garage that cost $28 million. And I just determined I was not going to build anything until I got that thing paid off and I was never going to go in debt again. So I pretty much quit dreaming. I knew that eventually we would need much more than what we have, but I was waiting to get that parking garage paid off. And it was one year ago this time. I think it was right the very first week right of now. December, wasn't it? Yep. And we paid that off, and boy, by January of 2022, I was dreaming again. Yep. You and were. so I spent about three months <laughs> dreaming by myself, and then I called my brain trust together, <laughs> and we just started talking about what is it that Karis needs. And of course, student housing is one of the big things. I mean, the obvious things. Matter of fact, I want to introduce Mike and Carrie Pickett. They are the vice presidents of our ministry. They're the uh, directors of Karis Bible College, not only here in uh, Colorado, but worldwide. And I was saying we have what, 20 something countries represented, do you know? We have 21 nations. 21 nations <laughs> that we have Karis's in. And so Mike and Carrie, are the ones that are helping me run uh, Karis. And so give us some stats on what's happening this year. We, we passed 1,000 for the first time. We've been working for that for a long time. As you said, we have just over 1,000 students here. And, and the, typically, we, we've had around 800, 800 students typically. Um, but just this year, as you mentioned, uh, we, we, we surpassed the 1,000 student mark. And our goal is to keep on going up more and more. And we also have another intake of students in January. And we have, what, 200 and something. We're, we're, we're projecting just over 200 students come in during that time. So we should be somewhere around 1,200 students by the time January yep. hits. And how many students actually <clears throat> applied and yet didn't come saying that they couldn't get housing? I think the um, w well over 500 students, uh, 550 students as a matter of fact, mentioned that their number one reason for not being able to attend Karis Bible College was because of student housing, not being able to find uh, adequate housing. And these housing. are people that applied. That's correct. So they were interested in coming, they just couldn't find the student housing. Absolutely. So Carrie, how important is, is all of this to student life? You are you got your finger on the pulse. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that we try to do with, with Karis Bible College is we want to make sure that we're creating an environment. So there's amazing word that is happening. People are coming because they desire to grow in their relationship with God, which is phenomenal, but it's also creating the atmosphere. And so we live in a beautiful town here in Woodland Park, but uh, housing is short. And yep. um, so with growth, we need to grow and create that environment. And Amen. so, so it's not only good word, great teachers, but um, walking the halls, even this morning I was walking the halls and seeing how, how we're, we're re literally filled up in every hallway, every space. All of our classrooms are filled and it, we're going to continue to grow. Um, we already have multiple students that come to our conferences and families that come to conferences said, you know, my daughter's coming, my son's coming. So we're growing, but we need to prepare. And I believe that that's part of the commission 
that going as far and as deep with the gospel as possible. God is bringing people to us, but we're not able to house them. And so if we don't have the space, God's not able to bring them and they're not able to come. You know, I'm going to come back to you all and we're going to continue to talk about this need. But Richard Roberts and uh, Tim Barton are going to be talking about Christian education. Both of them are very knowledgeable in this. Of course, Amen. Richard Roberts was the head of Oral Roberts for a number of years, and Tim Barton just has some great things to say about how important Christian education is. So let's watch these two little endorsements. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. I'm Richard Roberts, and I am so delighted to be a part of this very special event. You know, I've been friends with Andrew for a long time. I honor him and his wife and the great ministry there. I thank God for His teaching on faith. He is one of the most outstanding Bible teachers on faith that I have ever known in my life. And I thank God for Him. I've been there at Karis Bible College a number of times. As a matter of fact, I was there just a couple of months ago. I was one of the speakers in the Healing Is Now conference. And wow, were there a lot of miracles. And when Andrew called me on the phone and told me about the expansion and what God had spoken him to do, I knew it was a word from the Lord. And I want to encourage you tonight to get involved in it. I believe in Him. I honor His ministry and His calling. What He has done in Colorado is beyond compare. And this new dream and vision that God has given Him is something that I believe will come into fruition. And I expect it to happen. And I'm encouraging you to be a part of it. God richly bless you as you sow. Expect God to use it for His glory as this expansion comes up out of the ground. And then believe without any doubt that God will not only use it for His glory, but He will multiply it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God bless Karis Bible College, all of its faculty, all of its students, and all of its supporters. And God bless each one of you. Andrew, God bless you. I love you. I stand with you 100%. Hi, I'm Tim Barton from Wall Builders. And if you're not familiar with Wall Builders, we do a lot with American history. In fact, we have what's considered the largest private collection of original documents from the founding era. And one of the things that we love about perusing those documents is to see the connection in the Bible with the foundation of America. In fact, it's pretty hard to argue against the reality that the Bible was the number one source, the number one foundation of what built this nation. And as you look at America, having been the most free, the most stable, the most prosperous nation in the history of the world, it's no wonder when you're following and doing largely what the Bible says. And as we look at America today struggling with, with freedom, with prosperity, with stability, it's also no surprise that when you reject God's principles, it doesn't go well for you. Well, the reason we're rejecting those principles is because we really don't know those principles in American culture anymore. And this is not something that, that I blame the culture for. Literally, I'm pointing at the church and saying the church has not done a good job of even Christians reading and studying and applying the Word of God. And this is something that we are so grateful for Karis because they are filling that gap. But when you have a place, a location, a college where the entire focus is let's just read the Bible and let's do what it says. Let's, let's study the Word of God and let's apply it to our life. This is the exact solution that we need in this nation. And now with Karis growing and expanding, this is so encouraging. It actually makes us optimistic about the future, knowing that how you solve the problems in America are the restoration of biblical values. But you can only restore those values if you have people who actually read and study and apply the principles found in the Word of God. So when there's a place teaching the future leaders of the nation, right, teaching the parents and the grandparents and even the rising generations how to read and study and apply the Bible, this is exactly what happened for our founding fathers as they applied those principles and made America the greatest superpower the world has ever known. Well, Literally, if we will return to those principles, we know America can be great again. But the way that happens is when we have people reading and studying the Word of God, it makes us so encouraged to see that Karis is expanding now to welcome more and more people in with the growth of what God is doing. We're so encouraged by what's happening at Karis, and we thank God for what He's doing at Karis. Amen. I agree. You know, when we started Karis Bible College 28 years ago, uh, our nation was in a different spot. Now, all of the wokeness, the weirdness, the way that uh, people are being taught transgenderism and things in even kindergarten on up, I think that the need for Karis is greater than ever. And personally, and I believe that everybody here would agree that Karis, spiritually speaking, the quality of the materials we put out is second to none. But we are lacking in a lot of things. And so when I began this process in the spring and we started talking about this, 
uh, we're going to be right at 1,200 students. And, and all I'm talking about is doubling right now. I think that our potential is much, much greater than that. We could handle, I believe, 5,000, with 500 acres, we could, we could have a huge campus. But we are thinking about 2,500 students. We went and visited a number of universities and got their ratios of number of students that they have in student housing versus actual students on campus. And our demographics are different than theirs. Most of theirs are real young people. Ours are older. So we figured that we probably need somewhere around 40% uh, of our student body need housing. And that would be 1,000 students. So uh, they have a little graphic that shows our whole 500 acres here. If they could put that up and I could navigate through that, it'll give you a little idea of where we are. I did this out of sequence. I hope they can find it and come up with it. <laughs> it's not their fault. It's my fault. I tell you what, it takes a supernatural anointing to work for me. You yeah, gotta, stay you up gotta be you. anointed. <laughs> but anyway, we here it, is. it is. So this shows you the South Campus right there. And uh, it, in just a moment, it'll go towards uh, showing you the uh, buildings that we're going to build. So there is the some student housing, six buildings, a student activity center, an athletic field. We'll be coming back to the all of these in much more detail. It also shows a bridge that we're going to build connecting the north campus and the south campus. And then over here on the north campus, uh, you see there it's got some more student uh, housing. We've actually got a 300 bed hotel and conference center and then a performing arts center. The one thing that we already have over there is the AWM headquarters and we have over 200 students that are there. And then as we continue to go north, this will show you that there's more student housing scattered throughout this entire uh, property and it goes way up to the north. And on the north end, we're gonna have single family homes, duplexes and quads. And we're gonna have that so that families uh, can have housing in there. So man, we got a lot of things planned. It's gonna be awesome. Amen. Amen. So uh, we need to talk a little bit more about student housing. We've already broke ground. We're fighting the city on this and I don't know if it's normal stuff or if it's demonic stuff, but <laughs> we win already. We win, we've already won. We are gonna win. So where do we go with this? Uh, so, you know, one of the things when we talk about student housing that I think is so important, it's, and Mike and I were talking about this earlier, you know, we're preparing the ground for all the seed, for all the people that God's bringing us. And so when you think about in Ezra, Ezra talked about he prepared his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it and then to preach it. So what we're doing here at Karis is we're preparing, having a place of preparation where people can come and prepare their hearts to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. You know, it was really interesting last night, um, I'm, I'm, Last night I was working at eight o'clock in the evening trying to find a place for a single mom because she got kicked out of her place. And so just trying to find housing, trying to find a place for her and her, her young child because they got kicked out of their place just because the landlord didn't like them and decided that you know they were gonna break their contract. That is the need that we're actually facing here at Karis Bible College is to make sure that we can say, hey, no problem, we've got enough place. In fact, you don't even need to go outside of the campus. We have something for you. So and we also need to give you the background that we only have 7,500 people in this small community and we're 15 miles from Colorado Springs, plus there's a pass in between us and there and it's a little treacherous for people that are flatlanders yeah. who come here. So. <laughs> We really need student housing. I mean, it is in crisis situation here. So this is not a luxury. This is something like Mike was saying, 550 people would have come, but they couldn't find the housing. So Amen. it's yeah. something we really And need. most people, you know, they're trying to uh, prepare adequately for the things that they feel that God's called them to do. So they're looking at housing, they're looking at jobs, they're looking at those type of things. And if those things aren't in motion, then they delay when God has told them to come. And we want to be able to make sure that there is no lack, there is not any disobedience if God's told them to come, that they're able to come because the things are prepared for so them. So we've been working with architects now for six or seven months, and we have come up with some student housing, and we've already done a lot of the groundwork, all the excavation is done. We've actually got forms put up. We're just waiting on the final permits so that we can 
uh, pour the concrete and actually get started with the building. So let's show you a little artist's rendering of these uh, dorms and we'll go through that and look at these dorms and I'll narrate it as we go along. So here we are. Uh, this is uh, coming right into this student housing. There's going to be a total of six of these on this first place. This is very close. Matter of fact, let me just back up here if I can and turn a blank screen. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, in rehearsal, they started at a different spot. But this will show you where the housing is going to be. So this, they're going to be built in these little kind of lodge thing so that we only have 39 students in one lodge. They're actually two and a half stories. The basement is actually a walkout basement where half of it is um, the mechanics and half of it have people in it, but it's three stories. So this is going inside. This will show you what the you know central meeting area. This is on the second level, the main entrance. This will take you into the dorms. And so this is a common area. There will be uh, four people living in one area like this. Four people will share one kitchen and there's two uh, bathroom facilities, one on each side, so that only two people will share uh, any bathroom facility. And each uh, place has their own sink like this, two sinks to it, so it, er, every person will have their own sink and then they'll share a shower and, and toilet. And here is a uh, look at what the inside of the dorms will look like. And so, uh, Anyway, that was pretty quick, but it's not like any dorms that I've ever seen. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've got my, some of my staff here, they have lived in dorms I never had, but they said this isn't like any dorm they've ever had. We went to one university and they got on our website and saw it and they said, boy, this is not like what we've got. And it wasn't when we went and saw it. So this is up on the third level. Again, there will be a big area there and there's also one on the uh, bottom area. So this is going to be really nice. There will be six of these in total and uh, it'll house what 234 I think these Jesus. six and each one of these is going to cost somewhere around eight million dollars. It started out at six and a half and in the last year mm -hmm. the price has gone up, up to eight million. So this is Billy Epperhart. He's my CEO and he's the one that has to come up with the money <laughs> for all of my vision. So share Amen. with us a little bit about what all of this student housing is. What well, is what I want to echo what, what Mike and Carrie have said, and you said the need that we have mm -hmm. for student housing. And, and because of uh, some of the things, I, my background in real estate, I can tell you Woodland Park does not have a lot of housing just in general right now. Uh, the city doesn't have a lot of area to grow, and our student population is actually getting a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot, a lot more young people than we've ever had coming, and so they need housing, especially the single-family housing. When we first started, we were at about 42 million. Where we are right now with the, the six dorms and the infrastructure that goes in to support them brings us uh, to about 49 million. With this our, is for six units. This is for six dorms. Each one of those dorms would cost us about $8 million per dorm. And so right now we've committed and pledged from the actual current budget of the ministry a $1 million a month toward building. That was how we were able to pay off the parking garage in that short period of time. In fact, some months we were able to do maybe $1.2 million on the parking garage. And so that was a miracle. Twenty eight million we paid off in what, eighteen or nineteen months? Nineteen months. It's amazing if you look back at it, you so see. So what we're talking war. about is really not out of reach. It's not uh, different from our history. We've we've, we've seen done a lot it. of money coming. We've done it and now for us to move forward to get this student housing, this first project of, of the six units uh, is going to be the forty nine million. And so we, we believe that people who can see the vision and buy into it that the giving is going to enable us to be able to get up and raise another two million a month on top of the million that we're already spending. Okay, so we've got some graphs on this. I'm going to come back to this in just a second, but I also want to play two more endorsements. This is from Rick Renner, a good friend of mine. Matter of fact, Rick Renner and and uh, Carrie were very, you know, they knew each other very well when she was in Russia for all of those years. He's now in Saint in uh, Moscow. Moscow. Russia. And anyway, Rick's been a friend for close to 40 years or maybe over 40 years. And also James Robinson. So let's watch these two little videos. We'll be right back. 
Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and it's my honor to speak on behalf of Andrew and Jamie Womack and Karis Bible College. Andrew and Jamie have been our personal friends, I think, for about 35 years. And my friends, I want to tell you, they are the real deal. Andrew and Jamie love the Word of God. They love God's people, and they feel a special anointing to train people for ministry, and that's the reason they started Karis Bible College, and now they're taking Karis to a whole new level that is simply amazing. All kinds of student housing, theaters, gymnasiums, everything needed for Karis to become a full educational institution. And we have the opportunity to help them, and that's what I want to tell you today. Would you please consider giving a gift to help Andrew and Jamie as they fulfill the vision which God has placed in their heart? It is worthy of your investment. It is worthy of your prayers. It will enable you to reach beyond your world into somebody else's world to train somebody for the ministry. And today, I'm asking you to make a contribution to help Andrew and Jamie fulfill their vision for Karis Bible College. Andrew Womack has a vision. If he has a vision, I'm convinced with every fiber of my being it came from God. Karis Bible College was planted in Andrew Womack's heart. I have watched lives transform. Andrew has loved me a long time since he was in Vietnam and sending his entire check to our ministry. I don't know why he loved us like that. I'm grateful, but I know why I love him. He wants God's best through God's people, God's family, God's church, and especially raising up young people to understand what it is to be part of the church, the body of Christ that the gates of hell cannot stand against. We are to overpower them, and he will raise up at Karis Bible College with your help an army of believers that Jesus prayed his church would be. I believe that with all my heart. Andrew, I love you. God, I want you to give them all the resources and all the support, all the prayer power, and all the students that can be used to see your will done on your earth because you, the King, the Redeemer, has come to Zion. You live in us in resurrection power. And Karis Bible College can raise up young people that understand that. Give them the resources they need. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, Andrew, with all my heart. Man, that's awesome. I just appreciate the people that have got behind this vision. You know, really, it, this is not my vision. This is God's vision. And one of the things that I'm dealing with, and one of the things that when we met together with my entire executive team back in the spring, uh, Karis is subsidized by Andrew Womack Ministries. And right now, I don't know the exact amount of money per month. I've heard a lot of different things. I'm not going to mention it, but it's millions of dollars per year that I put in to Karis to make it function. And to build these buildings, if we were to start charging our students for this, we would have to charge them half a million dollars a year per student. We wouldn't have any students. <laughs> so anyway, it is dependent upon me, as long as I'm on television, to raise these finances. And I'm believing for a long life. I'm healthy. Everything's good. But you know what? I just don't see myself being an old man on television in the face of uh, Karis Bible College. I think I've got another good 10 years, 12, 15 years, but I need to get these buildings built. And so this is one of the things that's driving this. We need to get this done now while I'm still productive and on television. I've, I'll be turning 74 here in just a few months. And uh, so this is time limited. I got an expiration date. I need to get with it. So, Billy, uh, here we are, and Andrew, Andrew Wirtz is our senior vice president, and Billy and Andrew are the ones who deal with all the finances and have to come up with all of the things I dream up. But uh, So, we've got these charts. Let's go ahead and tell people about what we're believing for tonight. What I'm looking for, we've had uh, one person 
that just last week contributed $250,000 and wanted to issue a challenge to other people to give large sums of money. One of these dorms cost $8 million, and so we've got a little chart here that shows that $250,000. We would like to ask you, if God is touching your heart, we've got our phone centers open right now. The number is 719-635-1111, and we would like to ask you to call in and just tell us what you're doing. We would love to see one of those uh, dorms paid for. It Absolutely, tonight. the right. whole thermometer feels. And then we've got also yeah. another th thermometer, and this is what I'm really believing for because our bills come in on a monthly basis. I'm believing that we will raise $2 million per month through tonight's broadcast. Now again, we aren't limited to this. I'm going to go on television. You're the very first people to see these things that we're talking about. So this is brand new. We've not ever shown this on television. And because of the limitations that the networks put on us, I really can't turn one program into an infomercial and do this. But we will show bits and pieces and we will drive people to our website to this very um, live cast that we're doing right now. And we are challenging people to start giving on a monthly basis. Right now we have, uh, you can help me with these figures, but the last I remember it was 62,000 plus partners that we have on a monthly basis. And they average about $63 per person per month. And I really need to get 62,000 new partners. <laughs> if we had 62,000 partners, I think that would grease the wheel and we would get things going. And like I was saying earlier, we get about 11,000 new partners per month, I mean per year on just a normal basis. And so this isn't a big stretch. And I know that there's not probably all that many people watching right now, but did you know if we had each partner, these 62,000 partners, increase their giving by $30 per month, which I know for some people that's a lot, for some people you can't do that. Some people could do a lot more. But if our 62,000 partners just increase their partnership by $30, $32 a month, did you know we'd raise $2 million a month extra? And with the million that we've already had pledged, that'd be $3 million per month, $36 million in one year. And that would build us four of these units. <clears throat> yeah, quickly. It'd be actually closer to five, four and a half mm -hmm. units. And we could get that done in a... Uh, Years time Absolutely. as soon as we get our months. permit. Mm -hmm. So man, that's what I'm shooting for. Man, it's what we're believing for. Amen. So anyway, we would love to encourage you. Right now, we have people standing by. We got extra people on our phones. Matter of fact, we got a little chart over here that shows we've got uh, 83 calls being handled. There's 30 that are still available, and there's uh, six lines. I don't know what six lines in use but 84 calls have been handled. And anyway, we would love to have you call in and just become a part of this and uh, join with us. Now, we've got a lot more to share. I'm gonna be showing you our Student Activity Center. We're gonna be talking about a Student Athletic Center and just a lot of other things. But I'd like to go to another endorsement that comes from James Brown, J.B. Brown. This man is seen by over 50 million people a week on television. And he and his wife, Dorothy, have just become great friends. They, they are big supporters, big partners of this ministry. Absolutely. I mean, big supporters of this ministry. And he wanted to be a part of this. And also, Joni Lamb, the head of Daystar Network. Uh, so let's play those two videos, and I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. I'm James Brown, and I can tell you that I've been blessed in my many years of literally covering the world of sports, of seeing the qualities and characteristics of can't miss athletes and performers. But it is most gratifying when you see those same unmistakable qualities in those whose commitment and calling is developing champions in the game of life, who then go on to contribute significantly in the upbuilding of God's kingdom. And that is precisely what graduates of Karis Bible College have been doing effectively since 1994. Now, those of you who know Andrew Womack, the founder of Karis, you're aware that in 2002, the Lord spoke to Andrew through Psalm 78 and 41 that he, Andrew, was limiting God by his small thinking. Well, Andrew has revealed his 10-year plan to expand Karis Bible College into a full-scale college campus, including student housing, student activity center, 
athletic complex, hotel and conference center, performing arts center, and more. And you know, I've been blessed to minister at Karis over the last several years, so I know firsthand of the excellence of the faculty, staff, employees, and the student body. So I'm encouraging you to join the winning team and participate financially in bringing this to pass. And oh yes, my wife Dorothy and I are already a part of this winning team. Hey there, everyone. My name is Joni Lamb. I'm from the Daystar Television Network. And you know, over the years, I've enjoyed watching what God has done in the life of our dear friend, Andrew Womack. I've loved seeing his heart for the students at Karis Bible College, and I've watched them grow and mature. It's been amazing to see their journey. And I can honestly say that everyone here at Daystar is cheering with me as we see the vision for Karis expanding into a full-scale college campus moving forward. You know, from my time of ministering at Karis and observing Andrew minister to our audience worldwide at Daystar, I know there will be a huge impact in many young lives due to this much needed expansion. I believe we are about to see the passage from Joel 2 come to life as God pours out his spirit on all the future students. They will lead the next generation in prophecy and revival. They will dream dreams that inspire nations and the visions they have will bring the gospel forth to many. So I encourage you to give toward this future. Plan a seed today in what God is doing. From all of us here at Daystar, we love you, Andrew Womack, and everyone at Karis Bible College. And we are so excited to see all that comes to pass. And Daystar would like to send you a check for $10,000 as seed into this new project. God bless you. Amen. So right there, we've already moved this one-time <laughs> thermometer by $10,000. And we'd like to encourage you to call in 719-635-1111. And if you're going to give, I know you could send it later and you could do it different ways, but we would just love to hear about it. And so please call and let us know what you're doing. And we're also looking for new partners. We now have some new partners on uh, $215 a month pledged. We're just getting started, but praise God, that's a long ways Amen. from $2 million a month, but mm -hmm. that's one hundredth of the way there. Isn't we got it? started. Amen. So praise God, good things are happening. And you know what? We've got uh, plans to build student housing. We're talking about these first six units are for 234 uh, students, but we've got plans to build for 1,000 students. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we're raising uh, funds yeah. for. And uh, let me just go to Andrew here for a second. When Andrew first con uh, contacted my ministry, he was living in a student yeah, dorm. You were a student. Tell, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yeah, how that well, It didn't look anything like what we've looked at tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I were talking. I mean, cinder brick wall, shared shower arrangements. How many people were in one uh, room? Wow. I mean, I, I remember sharing a room with as many as four other guys mm -hmm. uh, in a room that was probably big enough for one person. So wow. that was just kind of the normal experience. So yeah, this is what we're looking at, I think is world class. And we saw that at the other schools we visited. And what was the situation? You, uh, I forget the details, yeah. but somebody had given a cassette tape as a joke to you, like this will <laughs> yeah. bore you, this will put you to sleep or something. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I was uh, uh, attending college, not, I mean, not uh, really living for God or I uh, had never really even heard a gospel message. And somebody handed me one of your cassette tapes, which you make available for free, your partners make available yep. for free uh, as a joke. And I laughed and tossed it aside on my uh, dresser. And then uh, uh, it must have been several months later, I couldn't get to sleep one night and the dorm was loud. And I put my headphones on and it was, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe this will help. This and is it was, the greatest insomnia yeah. treatment ever. <laughs> if huh? anything could cure my insomnia, it's probably this. And uh, five minutes later, I was bolt upright in bed and I knew I, I had uh, heard the gospel for the first time and I knew it was real. I knew God was real and I couldn't get enough. And, you know, I think when we talk about the heart of your partners, it's always been to take the message that God's given you, the gospel, and to get it to everybody yeah. uh, without any barriers. Stephen has uh, done some great videos on just your heart has always been to tear down any barriers that prevent anybody from getting the message. And that includes attending Karis Bible College. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got 
uh, one of the lowest tuitions for a school like this yeah. anywhere, where most schools might charge twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year in tuition, we charge a fraction of that, mm -hmm. and that that's not going to build the buildings because your partners are going to build the buildings, and they've always been the ones that have made this uh, all of this possible. And Andrew, you came to us uh, eighteen years ago, I think. How, have you seen any growth in the ministry? In <laughs> yes, <18 years>? sir. <laughs> yep. How many uh, employees do we have when you came? Yeah, when my wife and I started here, there were eighteen employees. I think oh, we wow. were nineteen and twenty, at least in Colorado at the time. And now, Billy, we have how many? Eight hundred and thirty-three. And that's local. That's local. And then we have, I would say, between eleven and twelve hundred total internationally. Yeah. We count it's that. phenomenal what God's doing. And we could do so much more if we could accommodate the people like they were saying. 550 wanted to come and couldn't get housing. Amen. Yeah. So this is really important. And did you know that the students that come, I mean, the housing is essential and that's probably our immediate need. But did you know once the people start coming, we're going to have to have a place to feed them. Absolutely. They're going to have to have a place to gather. And so we are also designing a student activity center that this one building is going to be bigger than our barn and auditorium that we have now. Right now that's 200, I believe, in 20,000 square feet. This student activity center is going to be 240,000 square feet. It's going to be huge. So let's uh, play a little. I tell you what, right before we play that, let's go to this other endorsement by Jerry Boykin and Dwayne Sheriff. And let me just mention that Jerry Boykin is a general. He's a powerful man and he's ministered here many times. Dwayne Sheriff is one of my board members, as is Billy. And Dwayne has a perspective about how the ministry handles our finances that I think would, would be a blessing to you. So let's watch these two endorsements and then we'll come right back. Hi, my name is Jerry Boykin, and, and uh, I want to talk to you today about Karis Bible College. Um, you know, it's been my privilege for the last uh, four or five years, uh, at least, to be able to go and uh, teach at Karis. I teach leadership there. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, in teaching there, I probably learn as much as I teach, because it's a uh, it's an environment where there is uh, two-way communications uh, between the students and the, uh, the professor or the teacher. And when I say two-way communications, I mean uh, they are given an opportunity to speak their mind. They're given an opportunity to talk about things that they are thinking about. And uh, that is always stimulating to me as the, uh, as the one that's teaching the class. But let me tell you that uh, one of the things that I am most impressed with about Karis is the fact that uh, they're teaching the biblical worldview at a time when we need people that are, are, are grounded in the biblical worldview. They have a biblical answer for the complex problems that we're seeing today. And I'm really excited about what's happening at Karis in terms of their future, and uh, what uh, Andrew Womack and his team there have uh, have laid out in terms of what they want to see at Karis, how they want it restructured, the buildings that will take place. The the I, I looked at the uh, the models and so forth that uh, Andrew was kind enough to send me the uh, a a copy of the uh, uh, little video that he had. And uh, it is incredible what they are about to build. Uh, and it includes, and this is big, guys, it includes athletic facilities. Uh, and that I'm just very impressed with what I see. Uh, they're going to have new uh, dormitories, for example. They're going to have an 800-person auditorium. They're going to have uh, uh, all kinds of new facilities there. And it's going to, and if you've been there, you know that it sits on one of the most beautiful places in Colorado. We need to get in behind them and we need to support them. Will you join us? Will you be part of helping to build this new college at Karis Bible College? Hi, I'm Dwayne Sheriff and I'm an active member of Andrew Walmack Ministries on the board. And I'm also a 
guest speaker here at Karis Bible College. I get to come in and speak on a regular basis. And I also pastor Victory Life Church, a multi-site campus. And so I just want to take a moment to thank you for your giving and share how that I have a unique perspective of ministry here at Andrew Walmack Ministries. As a board member, I get to see the stewardship of all the finances, and I get to see the integrity in regards to your giving, in regards to your sowing of your seeds. And this is excellent ground to give into, excellent ground to sow your seed into. Again, as a speaker, I get to see the effect the Word of God is having on these students. It's amazing, and that you are giving into something that's very productive, very fruitful in the kingdom of God. And as a pastor, I have a holistic view of how to minister to people. While I see the spirit and the soul of the students ministered to, there's a physical side now, a natural side to their need, and the complete experience here at at Karis Bible College. And so I want to encourage you in your giving. I want to thank you for your giving. And I want you to know that this vision that Andrew is sharing and the expansion is so powerful. We need to minister to the complete man, spirit, soul, and body. We need these dorms, these student facilities, student housing, even in our county, we don't have enough housing for the students. They need a cafeteria, they need an activity center, and on and on it goes with Andrew's vision. Your giving is generational. It will impact generations to come. Your giving is blessed, and you as a giver are blessed. Thank you for sowing into Andrew Walmack Ministries. Praise God for General Boykin and Pastor Dwayne, and I tell you, that it's what a blessing, the people that God has brought here. And you know, again, Mike and Carrie could probably give you the exact numbers, but we have like a, a hundred guest speakers per year or so that come into Karis. Yeah, we have a number of amazing speakers that come from all over the world, people Amen. that fly in and zoom in. So our students are getting some of the best education. I'm not just people filled with head knowledge, but they're out there doing, <coughs> building the kingdom of God, seeing signs and wonders follow. So our students are getting trained up by some of the best ministers out there in the Amen. world. Amen. And the things that they're imparting are not just theory, it's actually principles that have brought them success as well. And I think one thing to, to remember is this, as we're sowing into buildings, I mean, it, it may not sound that uh, amazing, but uh, the reality is, is that you're sowing into the future. You're sowing into people's lives, into, into generations to come. And very rarely do you have the opportunity to, to put, to lay seeds in the ground that are, that are going to continue to bring forth fruit as uh, for years to come. And Andrew talked about how he has at least uh, 10 to 15 years. We're believing for at least another 30 out of him. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I probably won't be on television. <laughs> I don't want to be this old shriveled up guy on television. They need some younger looking some people. Younger people. Like <laughs> Billy. Yeah, right. But there, he's only 39. 39. Right? But the reality is, is that for years to come, Karis will continue to, tr to raise up people and equip them to go out and truly fulfill the calling that the Lord has in their lives. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we all have the opportunity to sow into into the future. So we do encourage you, you know, if, if the Lord is speaking to your heart, uh, to, to really ask him, you know, what, what, is, what is your part to play in this, in, in impacting future generations? You know, right now we have a, just over a thousand students here on campus, but we're believing God in the future that we're going to have 2,000, 2,500, and even up to 5,000 students here on campus. And that's an incredible ground uh, for us to sow into. So I believe that this is not just for now. This is, this is a legacy gift that we can, that will continue to, to, to have impact on the world and the lives and the nations that are around us. We do encourage you, you know, ask the Lord and, and really, and really seek the Lord as far as what you, what your part is to play in this process. Yeah. Amen. So again, I want to encourage you that we've got people standing by at the phones right now. We've got five lines available. We got, I think 24 lines open altogether and five are available. We've already had over $2,000 a month pledged and we've had $20,000 cash come in, but man, we need a lot more. We would encourage you to become a part of this and help us. And so like we said, when these students come, we need a place for them to stay, but also they need a place to eat. Mm -hmm. They need, we need more classroom space. Mm -hmm. So let me play for you a little Artist, uh, or this is our architecture. They put together a flyover or a fly through of our student activities center. This is going to be a 240,000 square foot building plus. So let's look at that right now and uh, give you an idea what this is going to be like. 
So this is approaching from the north. This is a big portico shear that's there at the entrance. And as you enter, this, this flyover will be entering on the actual third level. Or if you include, there's gonna be a, uh, there's actually gonna be an underground parking that parks, I forget how many people right now, but it's hundreds of people. And if you include that, it's gonna be four stories. So this is the top story right here. This is gonna be a restaurant that we have. And as you go through, you can see that we have two glass elevators here that uh, service this. And as it turns around and looks back, we've got this four story uh, chimney. And on the bottom level, it's got uh, uh, chim uh, fireplaces on all sides and then up in that uh, restaurant thing. This is kind of a break area for the students. And uh, this is just gonna be a great place for them to gather. We're gonna put in uh, all kinds of food courts. There's gonna be places for them to relax and do different things. So now we are south of the building looking back towards the north. That'll give you an idea what the whole building is gonna look like. And as we go back in, this is gonna show you a 1,000 seat auditor, or excuse me, uh, cafeteria, 1,000 seat cafeteria. And we'll have serving lines all across there. And you see PARS, prime rib and <laughs> other things. So there'll be seating out here. This atrium here uh, is actually uh, Mike's idea that he came up with and I loved it. I think it's just gonna make this an awesome facility. And then as we go over here, this is a uh, new classroom facility, which we really need this. And this will seat how many people? Is it 1,100 with the 1,100 with the chairs and desks, <clears throat> which is phenomenal because as the school grows, we need to be able to have classroom space for them. And if you take those, what they call schoolies, those uh, tables out, I think it'll seat 700 and something. And then below it, we've got what, 20 or 30 classrooms, a lot of more classrooms that we need. Let me just pause here and, and well, I, there you go. <laughs> that is our um, pavilion that we have. So for anybody who's been on the property, that pavilion already exists and it just shows you how dwarfed it is by this building. <laughs> it's a big because pavilion. we can put 200 plus people in there. So anyway, that is gonna be our student activity center and really it's gonna be a hub of activity and uh, we're also, we don't have a way of showing you this, but we plan on putting a tunnel between the present facility over to that parking garage and then you come up through the elevators and those stairs and stuff. And that way, even in the winter, if we have bad weather, the students will be able to go back and forth through there. So this is gonna be a really big addition and it's needed. You know, when we went to all of these other campuses, one of the things that we discovered was that, I, like I said, our spiritual uh, content that we're giving is great, but we don't have these other facilities. And we went to places where they can see thousands of people and do that. And we need this stuff in order to compete. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're trying to compete with other people, but we are wanting to reach as many people as we possibly can. And when they consider where they're going, these are some of the things they consider is do you have housing? Do you and, have food? You know, that's a really good point, and this is one thing Billy mentioned this a little bit earlier. We are uh, getting a younger demographic because more and more <laughs> Christian parents, and maybe you're watching, maybe you've got kids or grandkids, yeah. and you're looking at some of these universities where they are literally losing their faith. We just got back from South Africa, and they were saying the same thing. These uh, college kids are, um, there's so many suicides at such a high rate because they have no hope they're getting a bad foundation. And so what we're providing here at Karis Bible College is getting their foundations, their relationship with God and showing them what their futures are. And so a lot of parents, and again, maybe you're one of those parents today, are sending their kids to Karis Bible College. And so, but the kids, and I have to say, when I came to Karis Bible College at 19 years old. <laughs> and uh, the facilities were not nice Oh, no, they all. weren't. And actually, I was gonna go to another Bible college because I had been there, I'd been in their dorms. I was a attracted to the student life, that community dynamic of, you know, that whole college experience. And it was really only by the hand of Lord that I chose Caris Bible College it at that was. time because it was not glorious. And you know, when Carrie came, <laughs> we actually had such small facilities that we could not accommodate everybody in the indoor toilets. So we turned all of the indoor toilets into female 
toilets, and we put porta potties out in the parking lot, and that's oh, where yes. the guys. And yeah. that's, yep. we have come so far. And I, I look around today, and I think, oh my gosh, that was 20, 23 years ago that I graduated Karis Bible College, and to see what God has done, and knowing that there's so much for the future, Amen. this is exciting. And I believe that this is this is really important for the next generation <clears throat> of ministers and parents and leaders that God is really going to release into the Amen. world because they're going to be also attracted not only to the word and relationship, but just this campus life that really sets them up for courage in the world. Amen. They're going to come together with like-minded believers, get to experience this, create a network of fellowship. There's still people that I keep in touch with when I was in Bible school. And so I'm excited to see what this campus is going to be. You know, this is a good example because it's really not about buildings. No. But Carrie, is a product of our Bible school and she spent 16 years in Russia and started all kinds of works over there and then our Zimbabwe Bible school started because of one of their graduates. So really it's we need the buildings and we are asking you to support it and help us but it's about people and Carrie is a product of that Amen. Yep. and she's just awesome. Well and I think that's the thing that when you have seed and then what these students go out to do is like we were talking about with Ezra, when you prepare your heart to study the word and to do it, because we're really keen on Karis Bible College. You're not just a hearer of the word. We're not just sending people out with diplomas, but a practical understanding and knowledge of how to apply the word, live it, whether it's business in whatever uh, sphere of the world that they go into. So we're really excited about that to then be able to teach the gospel to other people. So Mike, you were going to say something. Carrie's looking this way. She can't no, tell. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I believe that Christian education is the most important education anybody can get. And uh, I, I believe in order for us to provide an adequate place for people to come, we have to consider the whole man, not just the spiritual yeah. side. Mm -hmm. You're looking at spirit, soul, and body. And, and I believe just, just because a person comes to a Bible college doesn't mean they have to, they have, they have to suffer mm -hmm. and, and uh -huh. have sub-adequate uh, facilities. And, and if you look what Andrew has birthed in his heart, these facilities are second to none. Truly, they are absolutely beautiful. And as we're equipping people to go out and accomplish the things that God has called them to do to, to radically transform the world, the world's going in such a, such, such a bad direction. So the best thing we can do is sow into people, people's future as they discover what God has for them. And this is truly creating an atmosphere for growth. And that's really what we, what we can do best is create that atmosphere where people can be transformed. You know, in Mark chapter six, verse seven, uh, Jesus, the, the word says that Jesus called his disciples to himself before he ever sent them out. And what we're doing is we're calling people to the word where we're equipping them and providing an atmosphere where they can practice amongst themselves and then go forward after they've practiced to truly see the miraculous power of God in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I believe this, this is, this is the most important thing that we can possibly. And so do. I want to encourage you to stay tuned because we're <laughs> going to be talking about an athletic facility that will blow you away. It's really <laughs> awesome. But before we do that, Amen. as I was saying about Carrie, it's not buildings, it's people. And Stephen Bransford down here on the end, he's my media director and he's part of this executive team. And you've been with me since what, 99? 23 years, the year that Carrie graduated, I came. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Stephen helped start PTL in their ministry, helped start James Robinson in his ministry and Robert Tilton. And Stephen has been with me for 23 years and you've seen a few changes since a you few. came here. <laughs> but Stephen is our storyteller. If you've ever seen any of our healing journeys, he's the one that started that with Nikki Oshinsky and all of the teams are under him. And Stephen has really put together some things to show you that it's not about buildings, it's about changed lives and the buildings are just a tool. Yes, for sure, Andrew, but you know, very interestingly, in this first story, my team has put together three short little two-minute versions of change lives to help the people get a feeling for what this is all about. And uh, in the first one, you'll see Carrie uh, and the building that you're talking about where this began, 14,000 square foot small little building on Robinson Street. That's where I came. Uh, when I first met Andrew, um, that was the building I walked into just like Carrie did. Uh, I walked in the back door, but the Lord said, this is where I want you to serve me. It had to and be God. It wasn't the building. It wasn't agreed. the building. Okay, <laughs> now what we're showing you today, and, and you know what's incredible? I think back on it, Andrew. It was after a year or two of being on television that God spoke to you and, and told you uh, to, that you were thinking small. 
2002. Well, with your small thinking, just think of this. Kerry graduated under your small thinking <laughs> and did some mighty, wonderful Absolutely. things. And she's not the only one. I'm going to show that uh, in this first video. But, um, you know, it's about the changed lives that came out of there. But can I say, after what I'm seeing here tonight, I think a lot of people are like me out there. You're blown away. I'm going, uh, I think the small thinking is long gone. <laughs> Andrew, uh, when, when you paid off that garage and you started dreaming, <laughs> you started dreaming. This dream is big. Yes, it is. It is huge. And uh, I'm going, you know, it's a little over my head. I mean, I'm overwhelmed. And you might be as well. I mean, there are 62,000 plus partners <coughs> out there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other people watching as well, thinking about being a partner. And uh, what is it about us as partners? Uh, you know, our, our lives have been changed by this gospel and this special gift God has given to Andrew for teaching. And that's what the school grew from, and that's what we, we want to see it grow from. We don't want it to be like other schools. We want it to be a Bible school in the truest sense of the word. But in accommodating this vision, this big vision right now, I would have to say it, it reminds me of uh, David, what he must have felt looking at Goliath. Here is this giant in front of him. And what came to his mind? A lion and a bear. And I got to say something to you out there thinking about supporting tonight. This isn't Andrew's first rodeo. <laughs> Roll this tape, uh, guys. Send, let's let the people have a look at this. If these walls could talk, oh, the stories they would tell. It was here on Robinson Street that Andrew Womack founded Karis Bible College in 1994. Within these walls, students were first called of God to spread the almost too good to be true news of the gospel around the world. Students like Carrie Pickett for Russia, Leland Shores for Uganda, John and Elena for Nepal, and the list goes on and on. Before long, the rapid growth of both the ministry and the student body overwhelmed the little 14,000 square foot building. Andrew, prompted by the multiplication of changed lives, took a step of faith and asked his partners to help move Karis into a 110,000 square foot building on Elkton Drive. And oh, if those walls could talk. From within those classrooms, more world changers emerged, nearly too many to count. The Fergustons went to India, the Cedarstroms to Poland, and the Farbers to Haiti. Within five years, the building's capacity maxed out, and Andrew would need to take another step of faith. Inspired once again by the multiplication of changed lives, Andrew asked his partners to help him take the limits off God and move the ministry to Woodland Park. And oh, if those walls could talk. Former drug dealer Ricky Burge heard the call to Africa, Sarah and Jason Lucas to the Wind River Indian Reservation, Devon and Jessica Grome to Hungary. These few examples represent thousands of changed lives. Only heaven will reveal the true measure of their harvest. In the meantime, as Andrew, motivated by the multiplication of changed lives, takes his next step of faith. Imagine the stories these new walls will tell. You know, it's not only the lives that you mentioned, the narrator talked about, but as I was looking at that, I saw people that were in uh, Kenya. I saw people that were in France. We have people literally going all over the world. And I tell you, with our woke situation and stuff, I think Karis is a God idea. And we've, we've got to raise it. We've now got people uh, available if you would like to call. We've got over $4,400 that have been pledged per month. And we've brought in another $50,000 one-time gifts. But man, there's plenty of room. 
for you to give. We need a slew of money. I'm not sure how much it's going to be, but it's going to be more than I got. And so, uh, Stephen, have you got any more of those testimonies? We do. We have a couple more of these little videos. But before I show the second one, um, I want to tell a little story uh, on Andrew. Uh, when he went from that 14,000 square foot building into the 110,000 square foot warehouse, it, it was a warehouse. Uh, that empty space was pretty forbidding to look at. It was quite a Goliath, if you will. Uh, and as we uh, started the project, uh, any building project has glitches and, and problems and issues that come along, and believe me, there were plenty. One day, I was walking with Andrew across the uh, courtyard area, and one of the executives came out of the building um, I believe it was the marketing executive, and he had been sent by the CEO, I believe, to give Andrew some bad news. And um, of course, it wasn't this CEO. <laughs> no one present <laughs> is guilty of what I'm about to say. <laughs> and as we walked across that courtyard, this man came up uh, in all well-intentioned, and he had a sheet of paper, and he, he put it in front of Andrew, and he said, Andrew, you're scheduling the school to start on such and such date in the fall and move from our 14,000 square foot building into this 110,000 empty warehouse, which is going to be finished by then. And he said, I just want to show you. And basically what he said, you can't get there from here. And that was a discouraging word. I'm sitting there, I'm young, I'm just getting to know who Andrew is. And, and I haven't seen this before. I never had participated in a building program like this. And when I heard that word, it hit me hard and it hit Andrew hard, frankly. And as we walked on, that man turned around and went away and the two of us walked on across that courtyard. I heard Andrew say, I believe I've heard the Lord say to me, we're going to get in that building on that date. And we did. And we did. And it was Thank you, Jesus. partners, lining up behind Andrew and his vision. It was you who saw that come to pass. And it was God at work, behind the scenes, touching your heart, connecting you to his vision, in a way that no one anticipated. And I just want to say this, we're going to roll this second story about changed <coughs> lives. And as we do, just think of this, don't bet against Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and let me say right before you roll this that we've got 21 lines available. Everybody's listening to the stories, so please call <laughs> in. We've got over $5,000 a month that have been pledged. We've had 25000 uh, extra come in one-time gifts, please call at number 719-635-1111. Now let's go to this video that uh, Stephen was talking about. If these walls could talk, oh, the stories they would tell. They would speak of callings discovered, marriages restored, and breakthroughs of every kind. They would speak of marvelous healings, divine connections, and individuals so transformed by the grace of God that they would dedicate their lives to bring the truth to others. Lives like former drug dealer Ricky Burge, who now raises disciples throughout all of Africa. Former drug addict Johnny Rhodes, who now brings freedom and hope to others through his ministry in Missouri. And Muhammad Theridi, a former Muslim extremist who now shares Jesus in some of the most closed off regions of the world. After receiving Christ in Iran, Muhammad fled the country and came to America. Needing to get grounded in God's word, he found a safe haven within the walls of Karis Bible College, where the lifelong chains of legalistic thinking broke off with the renewing of his mind. My time in Karis Bible College is absolutely been life-changing, life-transforming. God has become real in my life. 
learning about the Word of God every day. Today, armed with the power of the Holy Spirit, Muhammad leads mission trips to the Middle East, where he has seen hundreds of Muslims come to know Christ. Muhammad serves as just one example of the thousands of changed lives who have gotten equipped at Karis Bible College. As Andrew begins the next phase of construction so that Karis can accommodate more people like Ricky, Johnny, and Muhammad, imagine the stories these new walls will tell. I tell you, I know all of these people and they are literally changing the world. I remember the day that Mohammed walked into the school for the very first time and I, I just happened to be standing there and I introduced myself and he said, hi, I'm Mohammed. And I, I said, are you friendly? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of checking him out and I tell you what, that guy is one wow. turned on guy. He spoke at our, was it Healing is Here conference or uh, Destiny conference? Destiny conference, yeah. And I tell you what, it is awesome and this is the product of school and I mean it's changing people's lives and this is the reason that we are <clears throat> promoting this and it's going to take hundreds of millions of dollars. I believe in for two million dollars per month to come in to get this started in addition to the one million that's already been pledged this year. That'll give us three million dollars to get started. We just had a fifty thousand dollar gift come in Andrew told me about and so praise God money's coming in but we still have 21 lines available we got plenty of room for you to call and I'd like to really encourage you to become a part of this it is going to get done I don't know how it's going to get done but it will happen and you'd be blessed to be a part of it so we got one more we got testimony. one more Andrew and let me just say to the audience out there uh, help me out here I entertained you with that story about Andrew and you quit calling <laughs> uh, don't do that. <laughs> Listen with one ear and call with the Amen. other. Uh, so anyway, but uh, I just want to say that um, uh, it doesn't matter how big or small your gift is. And believe me, there were, there were just so many people who gave the widow's might in, in working with Andrew to see that first building come to pass. And... Um, it's just a great honor to be a part of this ministry, and I know you feel that way. So as this video rolls, give us a call. If these walls could talk, oh, the stories they would tell. They would speak of callings discovered, marriages restored, and breakthroughs of every kind. They would speak of addictions broken, strongholds overcome, and supernatural healings. Healings like Jeremiah Klaus, who enrolled in a wheelchair and walked across the stage at graduation completely healed of multiple sclerosis. Raquel Hudson, who enrolled while on the verge of death and today sings on our stage completely healed of lupus and kidney failure. And Teresa Hotelling, who came with Sjogren's syndrome until one revelation changed her life forever. It was like there was an explosion on the inside of me. And I just very calmly began to say, Sjogren's syndrome, you get out of my body. Lupus, you get out of my body. Carpal tunnel, you be healed in Jesus' name. Back, you be healed in Jesus' name. And I, it was so calm, it was like surreal. And I just knew that it was done. Teresa's story serves as just one example of the thousands of healings that have happened within these walls. As Andrew begins the next phase of construction so that Karis can accommodate more people like Jeremiah, Raquel, and Teresa, imagine the stories these new walls will tell. That's what CARES is all about, is about changing lives. And we could literally give you thousands of people that their life will never be the same. Matter of fact, I was visiting with one of our graduates just yesterday who he was 19 years old when he came to school and now he's got two of his kids that are in school. Mm -hmm. And he was taught, I said, where would you have been? He, he said his life would have been an absolute wreck. It's, it's changing people's lives. Amen. And Andrew, you said we just had some big gifts come in. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. You mentioned the $50,000 that came in from a gentleman in the Caribbean. We, we just received a $260,000 donation from a couple in Missouri. Praise the Lord. And more donations are continuing to come in. And 
I, I was just thinking, you know, on a yearly basis, we see about 60,000, a little over 60,000 first time contacts. Uh, that call the call center or reach out to us in some way. That's all it would take is all of the people that are being ministered to and blessed uh, by your teaching and you know just by all of the teachers here to join with us uh, at what 30, a little over $30 a month is all it would take. Uh, we double our, our partner base and this would be no big deal. And that's that's how it's got. That's how we've gotten to this point. It's Amen. not. I think Stephen yeah. mentioned the widow's mite. It's it's not just about these large one-time donations, but it is just about being a regular, faithful monthly partner. Mm -hmm. All right. So right now we have every line that's in use. We got two callers on hold, but praise God, stick with us. We've had 6,500 a month pledged, and we've got. Uh, I don't know what that is. Three or four hundred thousand that has come in cash in one-time gifts. Let's go to a couple of in, uh, endorsements again. This is from uh, Governor Mike Huckabee. Man, we've been privileged to have him here, and Mike has just been a good friend to me. I've asked him for help on a number of things, and he, I mean, answers me immediately. So he wanted to be a part of this, and also John Tesh <coughs> and Connie Selica. They endorsed this as only Hollywood people could. <laughs> <laughs> so watch this. We'll be right back. How exciting it is to see the extraordinary expansion of the ministry that uh, Andrew Womack has putting together with the campus there at Karras. I remember the first time that I visited that incredible campus with these extraordinary scenic views, and I realized this is a very special place. God has richly blessed Andrew Womack as one of the premier Bible teachers of our time. Uh, and that's why the ministry and the scope of it has grown so rapidly and with such breadth. I'm excited about the new phases in the life of Karis with uh, an expanded ministry, an expanded college uh, atmosphere, and I have a feeling it's going to be one of the most influential Christian witnesses in the United States. God bless you, my brother. I'm John Tesh. And I'm Connie Salica. And we first met Andrew and Jamie about seven years ago when I was facing a serious health issue and we were led to Andrew's teachings. And at one point, we had the opportunity to visit Karis Bible School and even sit in on the classes. It changed our lives. Okay, then, okay, okay. This is going to be very short because this is very simple. It's 2022. Everyone is looking for a safe place to put their money where they'll see a huge return from their investment. What better opportunity do you need than one where you will see your return in eternity? You will be meeting souls who benefited from your investment in eternity. Come on. Okay, here's the thing. Give Andrew what he wants. Why? Because he knows what he's doing. How do we know? Look at what he's done. Amen. He wants to expand to a full college campus. Let's give him what he wants. Be a part of it. The end. Oh, sorry. Did you want to say something? What she said. <laughs> what can I say? Give Andrew what he wants. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Really, this isn't about my wants. This is not something that I'm doing and asking God to bless. I believe that God has led us here, and honestly, the school has grown to a place to where if we don't provide housing, if we don't provide the cafeteria things, if we don't have extra classrooms, we literally are going to be turning people away. We turned away Absolutely. 550 people. We need this. And we need you to be a part of it. How much has come in one-time gifts? Yeah, over six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Praise the Lord! Wow, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. seven thousand, over seven thousand a month in pledges. But man, we still got plenty of room for you. Please call. We have some lines available right now: seven one nine six three five eleven eleven. And if you're going to be a part of this and give, we appreciate any way you give. But we would just like to hear about it tonight. We're making yeah. a big deal out of this. I've anticipated it, and I would really like to see these numbers go up tonight. So call. Uh, we're going to go back to another. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you our athletic uh, complex. And this is going to be a huge complex. Let me just look at some of the stats here if I can uh, get them. It's actually going to be 204,000 square feet of an athletic center that's going to include a uh, Olympic size uh, ice rink, it's basketball courts, pickleball courts, tennis courts, racquetball courts, climbing wall, of course all of the, uh, we're going to have a uh, bowling alley in there, Multiple. all kinds of things. 
and uh, then we're going to have 219,000 square feet of three-story parking garage there. So you put all that together, this is 423,000 square feet and it's going to cost a buck or two. That's going to cost a little bit of money. So anyway, let's watch this. Let's, let's show you what God has put on our heart for our athletic center. Amen. So this is leaving from the uh, Student Activity Center. There's a walking bridge across some wetlands that we have, and this is entering in to this sports complex right here. It's two stories built basically below ground. The north portion will be exposed as you're seeing. That's where you're entering is from the north side. So as you go in over to the left is this indoor hockey rink. There is um, a thousand seats that people will be able to watch this. And Mike, you've made comment that uh, we have some uh, hockey teams around here that this would be great because we're at 8,600 square feet, uh, I mean, feet uh, elevation. elevation. Absolutely, and already the Olympic Training Center for, for ice hockey is here, so to, to raise it up a, a, a another 1,000 feet, it would be really impactful. And, and so it'll not only be a service to the area, but it could be a revenue producer. Absolutely. It's going to be a good Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So we'll come back to that at the end of this, but as you go around, here's a two-story climbing wall that we have designed <clears throat> in here. And then as you go on up, we've got eight lanes of bowling. And there's going to be food in there and all kinds of things. We've got pool tables, uh, ping pong tables, foosball, all of those kind of things. We have an equipment rental center where people will uh, rent equipment for all of these kind of things. Over to the left here as they pan around, we're going to have up and down escalators as well as stairs that go uh, from the different floors uh, to different places. And then as we come around, we're going to have all kinds of exercise equipment, freestanding weights, uh, machines, stair steppers, uh, all, all of those kind of things. We're going to make this so that our students will be able to get any activity that they need. As you look over, I think we have four racquetball courts. Yeah, nice. We have two pickleball courts. We have a tennis court uh, that's here. And I think we have either two or three um, basketball, three basketball courts that'll be in here. And then the, as you come up, this is an elevated indoor running track. That's a 200 meter track that goes around. As you look over, you'll be looking down into the ice hockey rink. And you'll notice that uh, I'm on the big screen right there in the middle. <laughs> And then as we go out, it'll show you that we have also exercise equipment, treadmills and stair steppers and all of those kind of things on the outside. People will be able to uh, exercise there and look out. And then as we continue on and go outside, there isn't a flat spot on our whole property. So we had to make one. And on top of the athletic center, we're going to put in a soccer field and a baseball diamond and there will also be bleachers there that can seat I think it said 400 people and then that parking garage that you see that's the one that's actually three stories there's two more stories underground and I think we can park what five or six how many cars five or six hundred cars there because this will be a little ways away from the other places and so they'll need uh, places to park so this is going to be just awesome. So this is our athletic center, and if you include the parking garage, a total of four, over 400,000 square feet there. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And you know, people aren't only spirits. They're also bodies. And again, as the, our demographics get younger and younger, it just really becomes important. I had a woman come up to me in class today and, and I had announced that we were going to do this tonight, and I told them to tune in if they could. And she said that her six-year-old boy uh, saw or heard me mention something about this in some place. And he said, Mom, I'm going to that school because I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to be doing these things. Mm -hmm. So this six-year-old kid is already committed to being a Karis Bible <laughs> College go. student <laughs> because of the athletic facilities. Yeah. And so it's not just about the spiritual things. We also need to reach people in a physical way. And God really told me that people ought not to have to give up student housing, uh, cafeteria, food things. You know, for some of the younger people, they've never done things on their own. They've never gone out and got at their own place. They don't know how to cook. Mm -hmm. And we are going to offer uh, a room and board facility. <clears throat> we just make it easier and easier for people to come in all of these physical activities. 
they also need that. And so, praise God, we're getting it done. Amen. Amen. This is going to cost us a buck or two. That's going to cost us a buck or two. It's uh, it's about, uh, should I say a number? You can say it. <laughs> it's I over, that, that building alone will be uh, over a hundred million by the time we get done with the total That's fine process. with me. I don't have any money don't anyway. Any money it's just God didn't ask me to pay for it. He just told me to believe for it. So this is what God's put on my heart. Again, we've got some lines available right now. we got about 9000 a month pledged, and I'm sure it's over 600000 now in one-time gifts that have been given in. And we would just encourage you to become a part of this and join with us because there is a lot to do. And, you know, I would like to just... Uh, Take Bill Johnson and Kenneth Copeland. They both sent endorsements for this, and I was really humbled to hear what they had to say. You know, I had one person that I asked to give an endorsement, and he loves me, and I love him, and there's no problem with this, but he says, I don't want to endorse Karis because I'm also friends with Kenneth Copeland and with Bill Johnson, and they have Bible colleges and uh, I wouldn't want to endorse one over another. And it just really blessed me that Kenneth Copeland and Bill Johnson, Johnson who both have Bible both colleges, endorsed. man, they are excited about this <laughs> and they're endorsing it. So watch this and we'll be right back. Hey there, this is Bill Johnson from Bethel Church in Redding, California. It's a privilege to join with you. Uh, Andrew Womack is honestly one of the greatest Bible teachers alive. He's one of my most favorites ever. And I'm so deeply moved by all that he does. And Karis Bible School is one of the, uh, well, it's one of the canvases that we see the great work of God that he's doing through this man, through this ministry. And I just wanna encourage you, I wanna encourage you to be a part of it. And there's a, there's a 10 year plan, a building program. We're gonna support it. We're gonna, we've got a check that we're writing, we're gonna send that way. I just wanna encourage you, be in support of this incredible, incredible ministry because a generation of believers is being raised up to truly have the impact of the gospel throughout the whole earth. And it's through this ministry. I encourage you to be a part of it. Let's support it together. Thanks. Brother Andrew, I'll tell you, sir, I am so excited about what Karis is doing and what you're believing for. And I'm telling you right now, Gloria and I are going to sow into this thing and so is our ministry because Karis is, is a, a sister college to Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Yes. And, oh, we're all for you. And that, oh, the thing, oh, man, the thing it got to me is the fact that, you know, you're on these mountains and so forth. So you're just going to build a big flat spot, a big flat spot, you know, with a baseball diamond and all that. And underneath you'll have a gymnasium. Sister, I want you to know now that took some, some Holy Ghost thinking to do anything yes. like, I, oh, I am so excited about this and I'm recommending to all in the sound of my voice, find out about Karis Bible College, find out what they're doing, get in there and help them do it and I am encourage you to participate in your prayers and participate financially. It is excellent ground in which to sow good seed, particularly if you're believing God for your children and your family to go to a good college. Amen. 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 And I'm telling you, Karis is fine. That's right. It is a wonderful place to find out about faith and just have a dancing good town in the mountains of Colorado. Hey, we're for you, sir. And we think, Father, we pray over this project that it'll, it will be financed so quickly by the angels of God that it will be quicker than even Andrew and all the staff even know. And we thank you for it. We praise God for this fine family and this, the fine staff there in those mountains. And we have good friends there. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember this. God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God for Bill Johnson and Kenneth Copeland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really believe that even though this is just the beginning of this and this is a 10- to 12-year program, I really believe that tonight this has started some things. We had some other big gifts come in. You said what? Yeah, we just received $25,000 from a partner in Florida. And I think we're probably well over $700,000 now that's coming in one-time donation. Yeah, wow, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, Jesse Duplantis, I was with him not too long ago at Kenneth Copeland's place. We were doing a victory-thon. 
And I tell you, Jesse has just treated me better than than a uh, lot than I deserve. He's he's a, he's a great guy. And Jesse wanted to be a part of this, and he said he'd do anything. So we are zooming Jesse in live. This isn't just a video endorsement, but here is the man himself, Jesse Duplantis. And Jesse, thank you so much for being with us tonight and being a part of this. And I know that you're great friends with Kenneth for a very very long time, and. To have you and Kenneth uh, endorse this means a lot to me. You guys have been really special in my life. So welcome, brother. And what do you have to say about Karis? Well, I'm really excited about Karis and what Karis is doing. I made up my mind that opportunity is the seedbed for the future. You have an opportunity. The Bible says we therefore have opportunity to let us do good to all. That's what Karis is doing. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to thinking about 550 people could not come to Karis because they didn't have a place to lay their head. Kind of sounds like Jesus when he was trying to do a meeting. Think about that. See what I'm saying? You have a place to lay his head. So to build these things is one of the most amazing things anyone can do. And all you got to do is just believe God because what for the H factor to take place in your life, which I call a harvest factor, you have to sow the seed, see? And the Bible says, long as the earth remains seed time and harvest time. Now I was thinking about you got 66,000 partners. Think about if 66 of them, 66,000 of them gave $1,000. That's $66 million. People say, well, I've never had that kind of money in my life. Well, why don't you give God a job? Why don't you just give God a job? And if God does that for you, then bless God, let's go do this thing. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's a 10-year to 12-year. I think you can do it in three years. That's the kind of man I am because I made up my mind that God's Word is true, and I'm starting to preach here. I can't help yeah, myself. Right. When you understand, this is going to actually speed up the time of Jesus coming. Think about the people. How many, how many Billy Grahams couldn't come because 550 people uh, couldn't make it and have a place to stay? How many Catherine Coleman's? How many people that could come out of this college and just do these glorious, wonderful things. Listen, I am a man of faith, and I just believe God's Word, and I made up my mind. That vision was given to Andrew and Jamie, and not just so we can say, wow, it's to complete the death, to reach people, change lives one soul at a time. So I charge you to do something. I mean, just, I mean, do it now and get involved with what God's doing, because what God's doing is touching the world. He said, for God's soul of the world. This is what Karis is all about. It's going all over the world. Now we're going to need people to sleep. We're going to need people to go have all these facilities. And that's nothing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, my God, the world spends that. I mean, Wall Street spends a trillion dollars a day just out there. All we want is just a few hundred million dollars, you see, to complete this thing. Or maybe a billion dollars. I don't know whatever it is. It doesn't make any difference. The figure Amen. is not the problem. It's disobedience that's the problem. So call right now. There's a phone line that's ready, available for you to receive and believe for the hundredfold. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Some people say, I don't believe that. Well, my God, when you need it, you're going to wish to God you had believed it. You <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. It's let God do what he wants to do. Well, I've never given that kind of money. Well, bless God. Let me say it again. Give God a job. You see, my statement that the Lord gave me in 1978, and Andrew just said it was, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe for it. And ladies and gentlemen, my ministry is totally debt-free. I have no concept of debt whatsoever. However, I've been debt free since 1982. You know why? I decided to believe God. And I, right now, if you'll do what God says, this anointing of increase, and I don't mean to sound arrogant, it's on me, baby. It is on this boy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> why? Because I want to touch the world for Jesus. I don't care if people know who I am. What I'm interested in is them knowing Jesus. We need to build these student housing. We need to build everything. And I'm telling you what, that, that, that ought to be a place people running every contractors all over the place to get people touched by the power of God. So call right now. That number's on the screen. Amen. and give a donation and watch God do the most miraculous things you've ever seen in your life. I don't just get excited about this. I know this is going to take place. You know why? Because Andrew heard the voice of God. Jamie heard the voice of God. Let me ask you a question. Are you hearing the voice of God right now? Are you hearing what God is saying? And I'm not trying to be pushy here. What I'm saying is God wants to bless you in the city, in the field, going in, going out. He said, bless shalt thou be. Man, you got to shout thou coming to you if you'll just believe his word. And I have preached there many, many times, and that is great ground. And I've sowed seed there. They've sowed seed me. We just enjoy doing the blessings of God. Now, I meant what I said when I told Andrew, I'll do whatever. And I thought, well, I'll just come to the, my studio, and if they'll zoom in, I'll just 
come in. I've just been enjoying myself. Lord Jesus, think about what God's <laughs> going to do. Give him a job and watch God do the most miraculous things you've ever seen in your life. For such a time is this. And I don't want Jesse? people being turned away. Go and ahead, Jesse, sir. let me say this, that, you know, I think when we start talking big bucks like this, people just get overwhelmed, like, what's my little gift going to do? But, you know, you were making a comment that it, it's not that big of a deal if everybody would do something. And you, you make that point all of the time that if everybody would just participate, it is not a big drain on any one person. Well, you know, uh, Andrew, I, I've learned something about living by faith is I want, I want to grow to the fullness of stature of Christ. But you see, every year me and Kathy increase our giving. Why? Well, I want, to in, I want to grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. I want to increase in my spirituality and everything that I want to do, but I want, also want to increase in my giving. Giving is the greatest thing anyone can ever do. Why? Because that's what you take with you to heaven. Now, this is philanthropy. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? All you people out there that give to these big colleges out there, 20 million over here, 40 million over there, that's good. I have no problem with that. Why don't you put something in God's college Amen. and watch God do the most phenomenal thing with people? Because the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Everybody knows it. Nobody knows what to do. I've told senators, I mean, senators in Washington, D.C., if you begin to believe God and quit trying to give church grants, just start donating to God's work, we'll knock out this $31 trillion debt. Say, that's impossible. That's why we believe the unbelievable. That's why we receive the impossible, because it's doable. So Amen. do something right now. Because if you hesitate, see, Satan will say, oh, it's not going to work. No, Andrew's going to get it done. Don't miss the opportunity. I want to say something real quick. One time God told me to pay off someone's house. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And I didn't realize what God was going to say. And we paid it off, me and Kathy. And to make a long story short, the Lord said, Jesse, you are the seventh person that I talked to. Wow. Six of them didn't, didn't do it. But you did. Now, you understand? And I live in a beautiful home. Debt free, bless God. I'm, I'm excited about this 10-year vision. But I honestly believe it, Andrew. I think you can do it in three. And forget about getting old. Me and Andrew are about the same age. I look a lot older. But you look at my age. So I'm actually I, two months older that. than you, Jesse. <laughs> That's only two months. I tell you what, Andrew, you say you don't want to be an old man on television. You know what God's going to do? He'll like make you an Abraham and Jamie have another baby. Just oh, to, oh. Just blow your socks off. <laughs> Mercy. Now you said quit we, preaching, you went to meddling now. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, you know? I really we, we believe we're here for such a time as this. And I don't mean just to brag on you, but I'm gonna brag on you. How many people got the guts to get up and tell you this is what we're gonna do? And do it first class with excellence. Mm -hmm. See, and Galatians six ten comes in my mind, as we therefore have opportunity. Here is your opportunity. Think about that. See, and when you understand that effort is the seed of your future. See, so when you do that, and I am just so excited about what God is doing, and me and Kathy are going to uh, send you a check for $25,000 right now. Wow. As soon as we get what off this blessing. thing, we'll get this thing done. <laughs> but that's nothing, see. I mean, I want you to, I want Andrew to say, please, well, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to blow everybody's socks off. One man in the whole world ever did this, and his name was Moses. He said, stop the people from giving. We got too much. Can you imagine Andrew saying this? Well, I want to tell you all one thing. We don't have time time to count all this money. My God, we just got time to buy land and just keep going. <laughs> People say that's impossible. Mm. Moses did it. Andrew's got the Amen. ability to do it. You have the ability to do it. I'm not just trying to say that to be funny. So call now and be a, I say, well, start where you are, but give God a job. I mean, so I've never given that much before. Well, guess what? This is your day. And I want to say this too. This is the holidays right now. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give Jesus Christ a great gift? That's how you give to him, is through ministry. I mean, everybody else gets presents. Everybody else gets gifts for Christmas. Why cannot you make a special Christmas gift to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through Karis Bible College? Think about that. Somebody's sleeping good. Who knows? Another Billy Graham will come out of that. Amen. Who knows? Another Andrew Womack. Another Kenneth Copeland. Another Bill Johnson. Think about that. I mean, this place is a seedbed Amen. of revelation. You understand? And that simply means this, that God wants this world touched. And Karis Bible College is a tool that God's viewing 
do doing to go all over the world. You see it. You see it in things right there. So let's get this thing done. Call today. I want, I want, I want people waiting in the queue. My God, and don't get off the phone. Wait and just do something today and watch God do this. I'm telling you, so he's got 60-something thousand people. I think 61,000 people could give a thousand dollars. That's $61 million. Amen. I mean, Andrew, you won't go to bed for years if this thing starts kicking. <laughs> you, know, you understand what I'm Because you're just going to be thinking. And people say, that's impossible. That's why I'm saying it. Yeah. And Jesse. That's why I'm saying it. I know ahead, you believe this, but you know, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes. And Jamie and I just love giving. And Jamie told me Sunday she was putting some of our finances together, and we've given away over 200 percent uh, of our month yearly income. We gave away twice what we received, and that was on Sunday. Monday, I had somebody call me and said they were sending me $135,000. So <laughs> you just can't outgive God. I tell you what, we give it away and it just keeps coming back. Coming in. back. I know you do you that. You know, Andrew, I, yeah, I do that all the time. The reason why you give, because you know, you, you, you're listening to the voice of God. For God so loved the world, He gave. And watch this. What's the first thing God gave Adam and Eve? He said, I give you herb bearing seed. Why? Because we needed to populate this planet. Yeah. We needed Amen. to fix this place. Well, bless God, CARES can do something that a lot of people don't realize. I believe it, I think it can replace Harvard and Yale and Amen. Princeton Amen. and Duke and Columbia. I'm not against those colleges. What I'm saying is God needs a place like that. You see, and I'm going to tell you something, Harvard's got a $62 billion endowment. Yeah. How come CARES can't have that? Amen. See, when I see that, I say, wait a minute, if they can do that, we can do that. That's right. But it's going to take people to do it. People did that, and that's why they have that endowment like that. So I thank you for letting me be a part of this. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't say nothing I don't mean. And I mean, a lot of times some people misunderstand me. That guy is something. Yeah, I am something. Jesus Christ saved my soul, set me free. And I tell you what, my greatest thing in the world to do is give. I just flat enjoy doing that. Call today. Do something. A, a one-time gift, a monthly partnership. But increase it all the time. Look for ways to do that in, in, at Karis and watch what God will do for you. I'm telling you, you'll get blessed. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. Amen. <laughs> You're a blessing, Jesse. You know, I got out of your newsletter a couple of years ago, and it, it was just a line that was at the top of the newsletter, and I, I forget the exact way it was said, but it says, God is looking for somebody who will take the persecution of yeah. uh, being prosperous. I, that's not the way you said yeah. it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, sir. I and, see God, uh, God is looking for a person to take, uh, you know, I don't care about the persecution. The pers take the persecution that the world may be saved. If Jesus would not have been persecuted, we would be having this today. Jesus died for us to give us freedom of life for eternity. See, so I made up my mind. People can say what they want to say. I'm on a mission. And, and you are on a mission from God. That's why the dreams keep coming. And, you know, you probably tell your executive, they go, oh, my God, here it goes again. Well, you know what? You, God didn't just give you that for this world. Andrew Womack's made for eternity. If you think he's building stuff here, wait till we get, wait till we get to heaven. You think you're going to be angels laying on the ground and angels dropping grapes in your mouth? There's a universe out there. There's stuff to do, and God is a creator. So let's create something today by your wonderful seed in the caris and watch God do the most unbelievable thing. I'll take the persecution of the world to have the, uh, the, for, for the obedience of Christ in my life. They can say what they want. It doesn't make any difference. Per, persecution, person is not cute, so it doesn't make any difference. We are going to complete this destiny Amen. and reach our destination. I'm telling you, I believe this can be done. I know me, I'm going over my time here. I, but when you first told me about it, I thought, man, my God, I don't know if the world is going to last 10 years. I think you can do it in three. I'm telling you, I really believe we can do this. If you've got enough contracting people just buzzing around and all that kind of stuff, who knows, one day you may own Woodland, Colorado. The whole place, <laughs> you know, why not? My we Lord, have had them. Say that's <laughs> we have had them talk about that, yeah. this, uh, what do you call it, this, uh, anyway, taking us out of the city. Oh, it? yeah, de-annexing. De-annexing us. They have talked about doing that. And I said, if they do, we'll just become our own town. We'll put in our own stuff. We'll get it done. Have our own police department. 
Hey, Andrew, can I say one thing? If you yes, really sir. think about what God's able to do, and I believe this is going on today, you got to understand, sir, there was a man way back when in Pharaoh's day just had his back busted, beat to pieces by some Egyptian. And the next day, the guy that was beat up took all the gold and the silver from all those people and walked out without one feeble one amongst them. Amen. Tell me we can't do this. Amen. God is no respecter person. If Moses can do it, Andrew Womack can do it. And, my, and listen, you got to remember, he's a slave the night before. And now they got wealth beyond 430 years of back slave labor paid off in one day. Amen. And they went out. And, and what it was for? For the work of the God, for the kingdom, for the temple, for the different things. I ask you to join with Andrew. I ask you to join with me. I ask you to join with Jesus. Bob said two of us agree. I'll be you two. I'll believe God with you. I know how to do that. I'll believe God with you. And you'll do something you never thought you ever could do. Give God a job. And once you do that, you go, oh, this is the most wonderful thing. Why? Because you reached people. Think about that. And people are going out. And it's going to come out of this place. And you can see the miracle from a 14,000 to 110,000. Now, now we're talking 400 and something thousand. And that's just the beginning. See, that's just the beginning. Amen. Remember, Harvard started off as a Bible school. Look what it has today. I believe Karis will do the exact same thing and better, but it takes people to obey, all of us together, coming together in a covenant relationship. Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries and watch God do the most unbelievable things you've Amen. ever thought possible in your finances and in your spiritual life and in your physical life. Thank you, Jesse. You are such a blessing. I love you. Tell Kathy how we love her too. You guys are a blessing. God bless you. Thank you and sir. I want to say to those of you watching that right now we've still got people here. We, we now have a phone center that's open 24-7. And so you can call even after this is over. You can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we have phone lines open right now. We've got about 15,000 a month that has been pledged in monthly partnerships and over a million has come in in single gifts tonight. So Praise that's Lord. pretty good. Praise yeah. God. But we're just getting started. Amen. And we, we need a lot of people to give. And I want to encourage you, when we talk about, you know, how, how expensive things is, are, things are, uh, people get overwhelmed. But we have, our television program is heard in nine languages now. We have, um, I think it's um, five billion people that can watch our program on any given day. And I know that not all of those watch, but let's just say that one percent of the potential watches, then that would still be 50 million people that watch on a daily basis. And let's say that only 1% of those get blessed. That would only be one hundredth of 1% 1 of the people who could watch it that get blessed. That would still be, what, 5 million, five million. Five million people. And if five million people who were being blessed by this ministry were to just band say, well, man, that's worth five bucks a month, yep. man, that'd be $25 million a month. I'm would that pay you. for our well, stuff? Well, quickly. That that'd, would work. That, that'd work the three years. We could get it done about. in three yeah. years. That's the three so years. anyway, I'd just like to encourage you to do something, to be a part of this. And I also know that there's going to be people that'll watch this in the archives. We will advertise this on television and drive people to this. And as you watch this, uh, I'd like to encourage you not to be overwhelmed with the big numbers because there are millions of people that are being impacted by this Amen. ministry. Amen. And if everybody would just do what God tells them to do, there is no gift that's too small. You just do what God tells you to do. And if you do that, I guarantee you we'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. So right now we have every phone line that's being used, but I'd like to encourage you to please, ple Keep calling in. Yes. We'll be there to receive your calls. And let me just end this tonight by playing an, one more little segment that will show you our bridge from this southern campus that we are primarily building on right now. And in the future, we're going to expand onto the 336 acres that are north of this property. And uh, we will have a hotel and conference center. We will have a lot more student housing, a total of 1,000 uh, uh, students will be accommodated in student housing and we'll also have a performing arts uh, center 
And I don't know if any of you have ever been to our place, but if you've ever seen our musicals, they are first class. Yeah. I mean, they are, we've actually <clears throat> had the people that put on our musicals that have been offered millions of dollars to go to Broadway and they don't want to do it. They feel called to do it here. I mean, we have the best of everything and uh, it's just really awesome. So let's play that last little video that will show uh, from the uh, student uh, athletic field going over towards the north property. So right here we are and uh, right there is our lodge. This is a 6,000 square foot lodge. This is the only thing that was on the property when we actually bought it back in 2009. And in nine years, we acquired $130 million worth of property and buildings debt free in nine years. It was actually miraculous. And so that's now one of the smallest buildings we have on the whole property right there. And as we continue on, this will show you the road that goes from the student housing and the student activity center that crosses this uh, county road 25 and it goes over to our north campus. And as we go up, this will show you some of the buildings that we are projecting to build. So right there is our student housing phase two. And of course, this is gonna go on up. It's uh, actually from where you're watching, it's one and a quarter mile north that you can still drive on this property. And we will have student housing scattered all throughout there. We also have a little placeholder for the hotel and conference center. We haven't actually got that designed yet, but we're working on it. And then we're also got a placeholder for our performing arts uh, center. And over to the left, the white building that uh, is nearly out of frame there is our existing building that we're in right now. And that's a 60,000 square foot building that we bought back in 2017. So altogether, we now have over 500 acres and we are gonna be building this out over the next uh, 10 years is what I thought. Maybe Jesse's prophetic and we'll get it done in three years, but we're gonna get it done. To me, the timing is not the issue. It's just God tells me to do things and I don't know when it's gonna happen. Like this thing tonight, we were believing, you know, for great amounts to come in. We had in over a million dollars come in tonight. That's great. We had over 15,000 that was pledged per month. But this is just the beginning. Just I don't know how long it's gonna take, but we are gonna get two million extra dollars per month Amen. added to the one million that we've already raised this year. And that will put us up to three million dollars a month, 36 million in 12 months. And that will get four of these units built actually a little over four uh, built and put us well on our way. And then we're gonna start in on the Student Activity Center. We're gonna start in on this athletic complex. We'll put in that bridge. We'll go over and do more student housing and a hotel conference center and a performing arts center and who knows whatever else. Amen. <laughs> I don't think that uh, this is the end of our vision. Amen. So uh, anyway, it's been good. I appreciate you being with us. And as we close out tonight, they're gonna just put up some single shots of some of these buildings and they will go through this. And also, I'm not sure exactly where this will be, but we are gonna put a composite of all of these different things that we've shown you so that you can go all the way through the student housing, the student activity center, the athletic center, and over the bridge, and then the more student housing, hotel conference center, performing arts center, it'll all be put together in one and that will be available on our website. So I wanna thank those of you who's all already given, man, this million dollars, that more than million that was raised tonight, praise God, I believe it's coming back to you. And I really believe we're gonna have some big gifts come in, that God is gonna do this. And I, like Jesse was saying, God didn't ask me to pay for it, he told me to believe for it. And so that's what I'm doing and praise God. You just agree with us and if some of you are in doubt saying this is too big, you can't do it. We'll just hide and watch. <laughs> As Stephen said, this isn't our first rodeo. We've brought in a lot of money. You no, know, we've actually had close to a billion dollars come in in the last 20 years since God told me I was limiting him. And of course, most of that goes towards our expenses. We have over a million and a half uh, television uh, time and two million plus per month in uh, salaries and then all of the equipment and then all of the other things we're doing. So it's gone to a lot of different things, yeah. but uh, praise God, it's gonna get done. Amen. We've done it before, we're gonna do it again. Amen. 
So thank you all for being a part of this. God bless you. Pray for us and believe that God is going to give me wisdom how to keep sharing this as we go on television. And just pray that God touches people's heart because as you've heard so many people say, we need some place where people can come and be discipled. We need something to counter all this woke culture and the cancel culture that's being put out. And I believe Karis is one of the premier places that God is raising up. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you. And together we are going to get it done in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good night. Come on, God is faithful. He's always been. We will not be shaken, praise God. Amen. We will not be shaken.